percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a ten trillion dollar market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. Moving the whole revolution forward. She got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 24 Hour Script. Let's get right into today's video. The IMF, the BIS Innovation Hub, Ripple are all silently working on the next world economy, the next financial infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. We're going to get into XRP scan today and cover payment channel funds because we have seen a spike in this. And let me tell you, it's the IMF and it's the BIS Innovation Hub. Where do we even start? The Bank for International Settlements Twitter account published this today. New Project Polaris report. They came out with their phase four, a high level design guide for offline payments, October 26th, which is today. And we know Ripple and offline payments. And even if we go to the first one that they released May of this year, guess who was involved? This is part one. And we had Anthony Ralphs and Anthony Welfare from Ripple, the only crypto company involved in here. And they talk about AML a lot. That's anti-money laundering and regulation. This is why Ripple's here. This is why they went after Ripple. They needed Ripple regulated on the highest level so they could interact with the IMF, the BIS Innovation Hub, and the big entities out there. And this video is going to get even better because in that phase one handbook, they talked about performance and testing. What are the performance processing and scalability requirements? How will solutions be stress tested to meet and exceed these requirements? Will testing include high volumes of low val value or microtransactions, throughput, capacity, and response time? There's a lot of thinking that goes into this, a lot of planning that goes into this, and that's why the XRP scan will not fail. And the IMF's big, folks. This paper is based on the mandate of the IMF governed by the central banks and finance ministries of 190 member countries. Cross-border payments present the foundation for the global financial system and its functioning is overseen by the IMF. That's why I always talk about the IMF and how the IMF, the World Bank, trumped the SEC. And that's why Ripple won this lawsuit the day it begun. Under this workbook that they published, The Rise of Payments and Contracting Platforms. Guess what? Prepared by Tobias Adrian. And if you guys remember this clip back from 2019. It's expensive. It's expensive to make payments, wirements, international payments. So I think one of the big motivations for this new technology, right, because Augustine is asking why, is that there's huge financial exclusion and these technologies have proven to increase financial inclusion enormously. So I think you have to look broadly around the world. Uh, I think this is one motivation and I think the, the Ripple example is one example, or, you know, and, and Norman has talked about that. When he was sharing a panel with Brad Garlinghouse, and look at it here, June 2023, and look how far we've come. More work is needed to test architecture, technology, and features, but also to develop legal underpinnings and governance arrangements. And let's jump into this XRP scan. Look at this payment channel spike, August 20th. Okay, this was done on a Sunday. Why, why, why did it just start spiking as soon as this paperwork came out? Because if we zoom out, the last time this happened was back in 2018, but nowhere near the levels that we saw in August and July. So this is very beneficial from an institutional perspective. Payment channel funds is important. I'm going to break it down to you guys. But this is the spike right here. And never before seen numbers. And then all of a sudden, these are the stress tests. 
Now let's get into what payment channels are. When you open a payment channel, you initiate it with an on-chain transaction. However, once the channel is open, all transactions occur off-chain. Off-chain transactions within the payment channel are nearly instant as they don't require the same confirmation time as on-chain transactions. This speed is essential for real-time liquidity management, especially in financial services. For treasuries, for banks, for the DTCC, for FX market, management of liquidity is very crucial from a bank perspective. Payment channels allow participants to determine how funds are allocated within the channel. This means that they can decide on the initial balances and continually adjust them as needed. This flexibility is valuable for optimizing liquidity in various use cases. Off-chain transactions within payment channels typically have lower fees compared to on-chain transactions. Payment channels offer a level of privacy and security for transactions conducted within the channel. This can be essential when managing sensitive financial transactions and liquidity between trusted parties. Payment channels can potentially work across different blockchain networks, enabling cross-chain liquidity management. Payment channels contribute to scalability of blockchain network by reducing the number of on-chain transactions. This can accommodate higher transaction volumes, which is important for liquidity management in larger financial systems. Higher liquidity, the more bigger payments you could send. And that's why the price of XRP can't be cheap. So in summary, payment channels offer practical solutions for managing liquidity efficiency by reducing transaction costs, accelerating transaction settlement, allowing for flexible fund allocation, and offering privacy and security features. These benefits make payment channels a valuable tool for various financial institutions, businesses, and other entities involved in liquidity management. And why, oh why in hell? Well, out of nowhere, when we have regulation, we are seeing a spike and payment channel fund activity because the big boys are here. The big boys are stress testing. These, these times, the big boys were here. These were unregulated. MoneyGram was here. Some US banks were utilizing XRP, small banks, right? So it just shows you that these were being used, but now the big guys are here. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And we will be back with another video. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. Uh, I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be, understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.